Kun Pita, as you know that starting this Sunday, some semblance of a normalcy will return to the country. You can go out uh, for dining to, uh, and do some limited shopping to do some outdoor exercises. But the more stringent shutdown measures, such as the state of emergency and the curfew, still remain. So, do you think that the the relaxation of some of the shutdown measures announced by the government today is are, are enough and to reopen the economy and lessen the hardships and suffer by the people? Well, I think we have to strike the balance uh, between public health and economy. While I understand government's uh, focus on uh, uh, preventing the second spread of uh, COVID uh, virus 19, um, nonetheless, I have been hearing heartbreaking stories of hope postponed, of assistance cancelled, and dreams uh, shattered from all walks of life. Be it, be it a mother of a child looking for milk for her children or a veteran who just lost their jobs in their 40s and 50s, or a newly graduate first-time entrepreneur opening a restaurant with days of cash flows left. And, I mean, the crisis is real and it, not just in papers or not just some statistics. Um, definitely, um, it shows the immediate pain and fragility of our social fabric, but also it reveals a structural issue of our institutions incapable of responding to our citizens' needs. Um, and that's why there's a need to enable the legislature to continue to function in the midst of the uh, global health emergency. And so far, what do you like to propose to the government in terms of trying to alleviate all the financial difficulty for people? I mean, in times like this, the role of uh, parliament in a meaningful and functional democracy is extremely essential. And that's why we have publicly asked for an ad hoc parliamentary session for a few reasons. I think first is to amplify the voice of the marginalized and, and that margin is pretty big. Uh, hopefully that we have some, uh, some of the that we can be boys of the voiceless uh, so that the government can hear them. And second is to uh, speed up the Ramadan budget to help those who are affected by the government lockdown uh, measures. And third is to check challenge and to approve the budget of the government, providing vital oversight and transparency for each legislative body. As I mentioned above, uh, we want to speed up the processes of the budget that needs to be sped up, but also to debate about checks and balances of those initiatives that are in midterm or long term. Um, in short, to be crisp and concise, uh, the government uh, initiative and action need to, need to be uh, faster, easier, and more comprehensive. And, and we'll we'll talk uh, about that a little bit later of what our party proposes. Yeah. So, but it's quite clear that the government has not responded uh, positively to the proposal for an extraordinary house session. So, what would be the alternative for the voice of the opposition the, uh, politicians to be heard? Oh well, it's it's still an ongoing effort. I mean, uh, mm. that yes, you you are right, Nipishai, that the government declined the request and the. Constitution stipulates that we require one third of the parliament's number of MPs and senators, and that number is 246 uh, to my recollection. And our party, Move Forward Party, all about 54 MPs have signed the request for the ad hoc session, uh, still waiting for the remaining head counts. But um, uh, the question is still uh, uh, what do we go from here? But from as of now, we are uh, hitting the streets. Uh, so my job is not just in the par parliament, it's also outside the parliament. So I haven't been working from home. I've been uh, responsibly hitting the streets and hearing uh, stories from uh, people uh, who lost their jobs and the owner of uh, small SMA companies to match that to the budget that the government mm -hmm. has proposed. And by the way, this is the first time that I'm reading the budget uh, yeah. without the strategy you know nice. you know what i'm trying to say usually yeah, yeah. in any organization the budget reflects the strategy i'm sure 
uh, Thai PBS you, uh, yourself when uh, when we were analyzing your annual report, uh, you started it off with your vision and then your, mm. uh, your strategy as a strategic response to the problems you are facing right. in the disruption of the media and then the budget. Mm. But as of now, mm. uh, we have some, some information about the budget, but it doesn't reflect the roadmap or uh, the plan to take Thailand out of this uh, crisis. Yeah. So that's why we were pushing so hard for that ad hoc parliamentary session yeah. so that we could debate, we could discuss, we could speed things up that needs to be sped up and we could uh, talk about things in a more prudent way because the, yeah. uh, the, the laws and the loans that were passed, uh, the deadline is September next year. Uh, read my lips. Uh, the, <laughs> so the how do you see the pro or yeah, yeah. the uh, loans is September next year. So hopefully there's there's elements inside that we could talk, we could debate, we could discuss, yeah. and then uh, include uh, the citizens' needs into that process. But yes, if you need to do that cash transfer, we'll, we'll definitely facilitate and expedite that process. Even one week, but, even yeah. two weeks, even days. I mean, you know, I, I've never expected Thailand's inequality to be on steroids uh, like this, that I could feel it, you know, seven hour, seven days for you and me and seven hours for some people and seven days uh, is a long time for people who are yeah. having their uh, debt uh, outside of the, the door knocking, asking for the return of the money. You know what I'm, uh, I hope you understand yeah. what, you're, what I'm trying to say. But, but how do you see the prospect of uh, the proposal for the extraordinary house session by the position meteorizes? Do you think you see any hope of uh, the government finally agreeing to to have it? No, the government was clear. So like I explained mm. to you, there's two ways. The government could mm. do it themselves, or we need one third of the parliamentary uh, votes mm. to open it up. So we've, tried, we've been trying with the opposition parties to do the second mm. part, as well as pressuring the government to do the first part. If both options fail, we will hit the streets and do what we can do in districts that voted for us or not voted for mm -hmm. us to do something like food banks. Uh, hopefully, if they don't get the cash uh, that they deserve, hopefully they still have uh, food or um, the important priorities in their lives to uh, go on for the next uh, 100 days. That's what mm -hmm. we're trying to do, as well as coordinating with uh, local governments to uh, help uh, uh, those in need in times of, uh, of hardship like this. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and secondly, the reason why I'm on your show is because if I can't talk or if I can't speak mm -hmm. in the parliament, and that's why I come to you, the media, to, to <laughs> be the, vo the voiceless and speak what kind of yeah. uh, hope is postponed, what kind of assistance is canceled, yeah, yeah. and what kind of dreams is shattered uh, in, in, in this challenge that defines our generation going forward. Yeah, we you're, you're, more than, you're more than welcome because as a public broadcaster, Thai PBS is more than happy to be a platform for everyone in the society to share the, his or her ideas on, on, on how this situation should be dealt with. So, so you are, you're in the right place. That's, <laughs> that's music to my ears. So I think, I think you would both agree that the the big question or the critical question is, is where do we go from here for the next 100 days, right? I mean, the past 100 days has been unprecedented and um, there have been a lot of glitches and I think it's the first time in my life, I don't know about your lives, but it's the first time in my life that the Thai citizens who pay taxes through a progressive personal or vet is systematically abandoned by the way or by the approach of the government. And we could, I know we have limited time, but if we take that as one example of cash transfers, I'm sure mm. both of you as journalists okay. have been a big hearing issue. about, yeah. about, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. yes. It's, it's, it's been one of the yeah, biggest challenges cash. facing the government now. But I, think, I think both both of you as journalists have been hearing all around the world that cash transfer is the main mechanism as Ramadan uh, action to subsidize 
people who have to sacrifice and, and lose their jobs from the government's uh, lockdown measures. And to me, there is two ways you could do this crash cash transfer. You could filter out people or you could filter in people. You mm -hmm. could do it exclusively or you can do it in uh, exclusively. Um, in case of countries like South Korea or Singapore, they filter out people. Okay. So they do it universally to the entire nation and exclude some people out. In South Korea, they go to the entire nation, they're suffering mm -hmm. equally, uh, universally, and exclude out the top 20 or top 30 people right. out. Yeah. This is filtering out, cash transfer. Okay. In so Singapore, the solidarity, solidarity payment attacks 90% of the Singaporeans and about 10% is excluded out. And I'm sure you understand Thailand is the opposite of that. And we use yeah, the filtering yeah. in approach by proving how poor you are, by mm. proving their, your occupation, by using an incoherent databases to cause confusion and conflict uh, within the society. So uh, yes, now the government started off with 3 million to 9 million to 14 yeah, million yeah. to 16 million and 10 million uh, farmers. Um, it's still better than, than the first uh, day of yeah. the, the past 100 days that we passed. But going forward uh, for the next 100 days, the government definitely needs a 100 day agenda where they have an equilibrium of uh, the public health, uh, the social welfare, as well as the economy. In short term, which is the first 100 days, in medium term, which is month four to six, and then in the long term, which is uh, six months from now. And then we can have that uh, planning and that vision and that uh, political inclusion and social inclusion yeah. so that uh, we would not repeat the same mistakes uh, so, Pitha, loss that have been lives uh, in the past. Yeah. Kunbitha, what 100, 100 days you see if we have the same path that the government has been doing right now? And what would you like to see differently? And what's the measure you would like to see different approach to have different scenario in the next 100 days? Okay, so let me break down your question and structure them in that dimensions that I have uh, stated earlier. In terms of social welfare, I believe the first three months, the government has uh, done their job, so I'm not gonna cause any more confusion with what they've done. But the next 100 days from month four to month six, uh, we propose a uh, universal uh, subsidy to, uh, all ties, you know, it will, regardless of whether there will be a pandemic or no pandemic, mm, people mm, are mm. suffering. Uh, okay. If you are 18 or above, that's about 50 million ties, uh, you will get uh, 3,000 baht of uh, direct cash transfer. Also, if you have uh, an extra need of, if you have children, if you have a child, uh, of a children that that uh, relies on you, you will also get an additional top up of uh, 1,000 baht. And we have calculated uh, total amount to be uh, fifth, uh, 500 billion, billion baht extra. And that will come from next year's normal budget. Next year's normal budget is 3.3 trillion. Uh, we have worked uh, with the parliamentary budget committee that there are reshuffling things, things that are not necessary, that's not immediate. We will settle out that extra 500,000 million so that people can have a, a transitional period from the month four to six. Uh, that's the first part, social welfare part. I, I feel like it's not enough. It's not fast enough. It's not easy. It's not, it's not inclusive uh, enough. For the second part of the public health side, uh, the government has set aside 45,000 uh, uh, million, right? Yeah, million. Um, and I think they want, I want them to focus on two or three things. The first thing is to prevent a second uh, uh, spread of pandemic of uh, 
what our neighbors are facing. Singapore is facing, Germany is facing, Hokkaido is facing. So uh, that's probably where the focus or the priority of that budget would be. Second thing that uh, not a lot of people have been discussing and I want to add and contribute is national uh, strategic stockpile. Um, hmm. We need to know uh, how many ventilators we have. Uh, we need to know how many uh, critical equipments uh, that is vital to lives we have, as well as disposable uh, mm -hmm. stockpiles such as masks and PPEs and uh, PCRs uh, so that we can ensure that our capacity of public health is strong enough uh, when we open the economy. The third thing is on vaccines. Uh, we are very much left behind in terms of vaccine developments. There are 70 centers all around the world. China is mm. doing it, uh, Germany is doing it, Hong Kong is doing it. And this pouring billions of dollars into this uh, research. And I look quickly in the budget, the National Vaccine Institute of Thailand has the budget of 27 million baht. Again, 27 mm. million. Did but uh, when, it, when it comes to vaccine yeah. research and development, I hope that this budget is ex expedited into our own uh, capabil capabilities so that we can control our destiny um, when it comes to a pandemic uh, like this. So that would be my, my two cents worth on the uh, public health side. On the economy side, I don't think we need to touch much uh, as of now, but you under, you hope definitely uh, understand the current situation of the economy. Usually we've been through many crises before, and if you look that into uh, science or fiction, you see that it's always a V-shaped recovery, whether it's mm -hmm. the financial crisis, whether it's a hamburger crisis, whether it's the flood crisis, you, you can see that uh, our economy has enough resilience to come back. Um, it's usually something very Focus in Asia, something very famous in debt market in America and some supply chain within the central part of Thailand. But this is a global pandemic that starts in China and moves to uh, Europe yeah. and into America. And now Southeast Asia might not uh, uh, might not be able to escape the word epicenter of the spread. If you consider what's going on in Singapore, what's going on in Indonesia, what's going on in the Philippines, the numbers in Malaysia yesterday. Um, and you consider how dependent Thai economy to the international yeah, markets, yeah. exports, imports, trade, and tourism. Uh, that's something that we also need to uh, jumpstart and strategize on uh, the recovery strategy for these things. and. Uh, definitely the dependency of our own local economy, of our own uh, local uh, market and see where our competitive advantage of the nation is in the new world uh, going forward. Um, yeah, so that I'll stop there for, for your question. Yeah, That's certainly, three what, dimensions what, that needs uh, I, Yeah, yeah. Aligned. I think the three, mention, the three dimensions of, of your, your suggestions are quite, quite interesting. It would certainly for me, it would be a missed opportunity for the government not to be able to sit down and listen to to, I mean, this kind of uh, suggestion or ideas from opposition MPs, I mean, because I don't think this, this, these uh, ideas are certainly make sense and, and it's cover all the aspects of the crisis that we are facing. So, uh, so with, in the absence of an extraordinary house session, so how would you put forward these, uh, these uh, ideas to the government then? You know, uh, uh, we've been signing letters uh, mm. uh, to the prime minister. Uh, various times to the Ministry of Finance uh, various times. Uh, this Friday will be May Day, Labor Day. Uh, our mm -hmm. uh, Labor wing will go to either the Ministry of Finance or Ministry of Labor and voice uh, the pain and tear and sweat of uh, <laughs> the laborers. Uh -huh. uh, hopefully they'll, they'll start to have a dialogue with us. Uh, we don't want to wait until uh, next mm. month, I think this, the, the parliament is 22nd. I will re-intervene right. re in 22nd, but the the first debate will be on 28th, and that's a month away. I mean, the mm. government might be able to wait, but 
people of Thailand, majority of people of Thailand might not be able to to wait that long. You know, we are holding our breaths here. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Kumbita, you just mentioned that probably we are going to see new world order, or perhaps we still have to think how Thailand is related internationally, internationally in the world economic order. But with this COVID-19, mm -hmm. do you foresee totally unprecedented future for Thailand? Like perhaps we have to be back to more local economy rather than realizing too much on global economy. What, what's the future? What's your vision? Uh, first of all, I, I don't know about you too, but uh, it's for myself, I, I start to smell the sentiment of anti-globalization, of mm, uh, yeah. national isolation, Russia, Saudi Arabia, uh, China and America, and, and China and India, and Germany and America, for example. I mean, I have to, we have to start thinking about building a, a grassroots economy uh, as opposed to relying on, on our export markets and international tourists. Uh, uh, and that, in one, sense, in one sense, Thailand cannot just be Bangkok and Bangkok cannot just be mm -hmm. Thailand. It has to be a, a less congested amount of wealth, a less congested amount of activities, a less congested amount of uh, wealth of uh, budget. Um, for example, let me, let me be clear on what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know, we have about 2.8 uh, trillion uh, baht uh, from tourism. That revenue that comes to our country is so consolidated and congested into a few cities. Wouldn't you agree? Like Bangkok or sure, Hathia yeah, or yeah. Okay. a handful of uh, tourist destinations. Yeah, yeah. In terms of destinations uh, and, on, and also the recipients of that tourist, uh, or not tourist dollars, right? Uh, tourist, tourist dollars, right? But I think we have a lot of offerings for uh, safe tourism, for hygiene tourism, uh, for healthy tourism uh, that the New World Order might desire. Uh, a city that is less congested, that allows proper social distancing, somewhere that is quiet and good for the mind, a city that is well equipped with a public health capacity, uh, a city with a direct uh, airport that does not allow you to travel across cities. I'm thinking about cities like Praia, Prayao, mm. Satun, Thrang, these yeah, uh, yeah. cities that arguably uh, majority of our tourists wouldn't be thinking about. Yeah. Uh, and Second I can tier give you a, cities, a yeah. Yeah, second tier cities for tourism, yeah. Second tier cities. Yeah. It used to be a second tier cities in the past without the pandemic. Mm. But with the, with the pandemic, with the hygiene concerns, with the social distancing uh, mentors, we need to distribute our tours. And if we have uh, something strong, uh, solid, and aligned with their new needs, I think yeah. we have a way to uh, more or less recover our tourism industry as well as spread out <coughs> and that will be a new phase of uh, tourism where everybody can benefit from that yeah so what so, so, I, 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 so what you mean is that we should not be too overjoyed by the news that the, the Chinese tourists uh, have come knocking on our doors again right uh, um, yes the the I mean, Thailand is pretty strong on tourism. We've been number one in the world in terms of cities and countries. So when people want to leave their home, they think about Thailand. But we have to uh, be proactive and think about, uh, be smart and be strategic and how we can capitalize on the current situation and maximize the, the revenue from this tourism that is not just con congested on the top, as well as uh, spread it out throughout the grassroots economy as uh, throughout the nations. Um, agri 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 uh, I'm sure both of you have been to Italy and you've heard the term 
agritourism and that's agriculture and tourism together and that's designed for people who are looking for something new something more outdoor something more challenged something less crowded uh, uh, to me that that jives with what we can expect or we can assume that it will be in the minds and hearts of uh, travelers be it chinese or or non-chinese by the way we need to diversify <laughs> Yeah, we can't think, just the, be reliant yeah. on one country, whether it's trade or tourist, or tourism. Uh, we need to be able to think about more, yeah. uh, more destinations, so that we don't want to put one egg in the basket, and if something hits the fan, and then we lose that amount of yeah. uh, revenue uh, right away, yeah. and, and employment uh, right away. So, and I think I think the the whole my, crisis. My sec. Yeah, no, the whole the whole crisis, the computer, I think, is the a, a, a good wake up call that should make us rethink all aspects of our economy and strategies. Now, we have this so-called 20-year strategy, right? But with this crisis, I think we certainly need to sit down and then take another look at the strategy we have, whether or not they, they conform with the realities of the, the present-day situation and what will transpire afterward. Well, to respond to you, firstly, stars uh, shine brighter in darkness. Uh, mm -hmm. something that we've been waiting to do, uh, restructuring of our public service sector, restructuring of our uh, database on the linkages between the government and the people. The use of our national ID card has to be more than just what we put on the Xerox and it has to be linked to it and account for the unbankables and things like that. Yes, it's a wake up call for a lot of work that has been put under rock for the past 50 years that's structurally ingrained in our society. but. Um, second, secondly, I think um, it's it's a time for us to uh, unite together and and um, try to overcome this and and take Thailand out of this crisis as uh, minimal minimal pain as as possible. Yes, it's time to rethink. Um, Amazing Thailand can can be healthy Thailand. How's that in a concise and a crisp uh, yeah. answer? Uh, you know, every country is amazing. Wouldn't you agree? Amazing, yeah. amazing India, yeah. amazing Australia. Yeah. But in their own know, way, to yeah. some country to, <laughs> to have food that is healthy for you in terms of prevention, yeah. and a strong yeah. hospital system that is uh, a good cure, and prevention is better than cure. And if we align our strategy in that sense, and public relations and marketing is just you know, something that's superficial on top of what we really think that is our national strategy uh, as, as bones of our country. And we can have some uh, some uh, public relations and some marketing and some rebranding for Thailand so that it, it works yeah. for that, so that the economy works for everybody and just not uh, a few.